God leads us along through floods and trials and temptations. He's with us every moment, uh, but we do go through the trials as Christians, don't we? And, uh, and I know so many who are going through some hard trials right now. Uh, but the Bible tells us that we should not be surprised. Those trials make us stronger in our faith. As we have uh, time in these trials, uh, we have time to, to rest our faith upon Jesus Christ and know that he is with us, just like he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end. And so did you get your Bible? Uh, let's turn to Mark chapter 1, and, uh, and let's take some time to look at Scripture here. Jesus is calling. And, uh, and let me just stress the importance of this to you, that there's a time when Jesus calls. And in our short lives here on earth, uh, there is a window when Jesus is calling. And it's important when we receive that call that we hear we recognize that we are being called by the master and that we answer and many answer no i'm not interested but some answer yes i'll follow you and that's the that's the message today in today's uh, sermon mark chapter one um, i want to share with you the beginning of jesus ministry uh, near the beginning here it says in verse 14, Mark chapter 1, verse 14, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Uh, so here Jesus, near the beginning of his ministry, he goes to Galilee and he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. So what is the gospel? You hear that term all the time, and I've, I've mentioned it in other uh, messages that we've had here recently, but gospel simply means good news. So Jesus is preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. And he's telling us how we can receive that good news, how we can uh, how we can secure ourselves in that good news. We want to be part of that good news in the kingdom of God. Let's look at verse 15. And it says, uh, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is telling us that the time is now. He had come. He had come as a baby born in a stable. Uh, God with us. God in the flesh. Emmanuel. And, uh, and he says the kingdom of God is at hand. And listen, for us, uh, whether you're in your teens, your 20s, uh, whether you have reached into your 30s, 40s, or 50s, or if you're blessed enough to be beyond that, uh, life ends here in the flesh, doesn't it? And, and there comes a time where uh, the time for us is fulfilled. Uh, if Christ uh, remains uh, and does not come back to this earth before we die, then we perish and our time is right then. Our time is at that point to stand before the judge of the living and the dead, Jesus Christ. And so time is precious. And Jesus says the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. There's going to be a judgment day where those who have said yes to Jesus Christ Yes, I will follow you. Yes, you're my savior. Yes, I turn my heart to you and away from sin. Yes, I've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and I've received the Holy Spirit. Those will go on to live in eternity with Christ. And those who have rejected, those who have uh, neglected this gift that's been given, the gift of salvation in Jesus, those will go for an eternity separated from God an eternity of punishment, an eternity of separation. And, uh, and the Bible says there will be uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not a pleasant thing. And so time is critical. Jesus says the time was fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Well, then what do we do? He says, repent. Repentance is turning from sin, turning, changing your mind, changing your heart. 
and saying, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to be an adulterer. I don't want to be a drunk. I don't want to be a thief. I don't want to use the name of the Lord in vain as a curse word. I don't want to uh, disregard my parents or disgrace them. Uh, I don't want to have anything else to be number one in my life. God is number one in my life. It's, it's that kind of a turn where you, you make this uh, massive critical decision in your life to turn your life around and start seeking Jesus Christ. That's repentance. He says, repent and believe in the gospel. Believe in the good news. What is the good news? Though we are criminals before the judge of the living and the dead, there is a savior. God has provided a savior, his only son, Jesus Christ. And that is wonderful good news, folks. That is wonderful good news. We have hope in Jesus Christ. Amen? We have hope in him. And what do we have to do? Well, John 3.16 says this, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Look, we are to turn our lives from sin, turn to Jesus Christ and follow him and love him and trust him with our salvation. That's what we're supposed to do. And so the early ministry of Jesus is just like the ending ministry of Jesus on this earth and his ministry today through his spirit and through the word. Repent, turn your hearts to the Lord. And it says in verse 16 of Mark chapter one, and as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. They said to Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, and then Jesus said to them in verse 17, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. Uh, this is something that in our Bible studies at our congregation, just this past Wednesday, uh, we talked about this. Follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. In verse 15, he tells us that there's a blessing that we are to repent and believe in the gospel. There is good news for us, friend. We have a savior and he loves us and he wants us to spend eternity. That's the blessing. And now comes the duty in verse 17. He says, if you'll receive this blessing, I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me, follow me. And Jesus tells us in chapter seven, verses 13 and 14, that there are a couple of roads that we can take in our life, uh, in our lives. There is the, the smooth, easy road. This is the road, the broad road, he calls it, the broad way, where uh, it's just an easy road. And he says, many are on that road. Most are on that road. It doesn't require anything from you. You get to decide what's right and wrong. You get to decide uh, whether things are righteous or not righteous and you make your decisions for your life. God is left out of the equation. God doesn't bother you, and you spend your life doing what you please and, and deciding what's right and what's wrong. And that's the broad road that Jesus said. It's easy, but it leads to destruction. It leads to eternal damnation. But he said that, the, that there's another road. It's a difficult road, and it's aiming toward a narrow gate and so when we follow Jesus, we are on this difficult road leading to a narrow target. And he says that this difficult road, when we follow him, it leads to eternal life. That's the road we need to be on. A little bit of a difficult road here, and we've got an eternity to spend with Jesus Christ. An eternity. It requires us repenting, turning to him, placing our trust in him, and following him by his word and by his spirit. And it says in verse 18, they immediately left their nets and followed him. This is a great example for us. When we're called, when Jesus is knocking and calling, do not delay. It's time immediately to turn and follow him. And I, I need to tell you, friends, Jesus is calling today. There's, 
maybe some out there who are watching this uh, first broadcast on uh, on Sunday, August 23rd at 3 o'clock, and, and you don't belong to Jesus. You've not done this. You've not turned to him. You've not dropped your sins behind you and ran to Jesus and, 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 uh, and became his disciple, became his student. You've not done that. You've not put your trust in a savior who died and rose on the third day so that you can live. He took the punishment that you and I deserve. And he says, all we need to do is trust in him, trust in the gospel of the kingdom. This gospel, the good news that we have a family in heaven waiting for us if we will just repent and trust in Jesus. That is a wonderful thing and I belong to him and I'm happy because of that. I love that song, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. And his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. This Savior loves me and he loves you too. And he died for us so that we could live. Amen? Amen. Um, let's turn to Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 7 reminds us that today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. In other words, if you hear him calling you today, if you can feel the tugging on your heart, and even if you belong to him, but you've strayed, or you belong to him and, and you know that your relationship with him isn't as close as it used to be. If you hear him calling, don't delay. Don't turn away from him. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Come to him. Come running to him. Jesus loves you, and he's your savior. He's the only savior that is provided for us, Jesus Christ. Uh, let me share a few things with you here as, uh, as we're uh, kind of just gathering our thoughts about Jesus calling. You know, in John chapter 11, you don't have to turn there, but we know what's in John chapter 11, those of us who are students of the Bible. And, and even if you're not, you've heard of Lazarus. Lazarus, the, the friend, the very close friend of Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus was very close to Lazarus' family. And Lazarus died. Now, the sisters of Lazarus had, uh, had uh, sent to Jesus a message and said, your, your close friend Lazarus is sick and he's dying. Come, please come. Jesus waited before he went. And it was four days before Jesus arrived at the, at the uh, site there. Four days before Jesus reached Lazarus. And in that time, Lazarus died. You see, Jesus delayed, and he delayed for a reason. He knew his friend would die. But Jesus came with another plan. Jesus came to prove his power over death, over hell, and over the grave. And he did that in a spectacular way with Lazarus. He came and he asked where the body was laid and they brought him to the tomb and he, and he told the family to have that stone in front of the cave rolled away. The family begged him and said, no, Jesus, no, you don't understand, Master. He's been dead for four days. He's rotting. He is a rotting corpse in there and he'll stink to high heaven. Don't roll the stone away. Don't embarrass us. Don't, don't disgrace the body of our, of our dear Lazarus by rolling away and opening his tomb now. But Jesus insisted that the stone be rolled away. And when the stone was rolled away, <laughs> uh, Jesus prayed to the Father. And as he finished his prayer, he looked at that open tomb. And it says in, in John eleven forty three, 43, he cried out, with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come on, come on. And you know what happened? The Bible says 
that immediately Lazarus hopped out of that tomb. He was wrapped up in grave clothes and Lazarus hopped out of that tomb and Jesus said, unwrap him. He's fine. Jesus showed many times his power over sickness, his power over disease, his power over affliction, and his power even over death and the grave. And he did that so that we would believe. John says that he wrote these miracles, he recorded these true miracles that Jesus did so that we would believe, and in believing, that we would put our trust in him and be saved. I'm thankful for the gospel accounts, aren't you? I'm thankful for the truth of God's word and the preaching and teaching of Jesus and all these examples that are given of the things that Jesus, Jesus did. In Matthew 9, 13, Jesus said, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So right now, uh, or, or if you're watching this replay, uh, then right now for you, the word of God may just be bouncing off of you. And you may be arguing with me, it, even if it's just in your mind and in your thoughts, you may be arguing with me or your heart may be arguing, no, I, I don't need a savior. I'm not bad. I'm a good person. Well, the Bible speaks of us. The Bible says that if we're given an opportunity, we're going to say that we're a good person. That's in our nature to do that. We don't want to think of ourselves as bad. And yet every one of us has broken the Ten Commandments. Every one of us has broken the law of God, whether lying or, or thievery, whether blasphemy, using the Lord's name as a curse word, whether disobeying and dishonoring our parents, whether coveting or adultery, perversion, any of these things, uh, the Ten Commandments stand as one law. It is the law, and the law has ten points. You break any one of those, and you have broken the law. And you say, well, that was a long time ago, Jim. I haven't told a lie for two years. First of all, wow. Congratulations. I, I'm curious if that's true because it's very hard. We are, we are almost hardwired to lie once in a while. It's not right, by the way, and you need God's help to help stop that. You need the Holy Spirit to help you with that. But we break the law continually. I'm going to say every day I find myself in a puddle of my own sin. And uh, regardless of what it might be, it might be a sin of something I've done or even a sin of something I've thought. Because Jesus said, you've heard it said you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you lust after someone, then you've committed adultery in your heart. Jesus said, you've heard it said you shall not murder. But I tell you, if you hate someone, you've committed murder in your heart. Friends, we're guilty. And even though it might have happened years ago, how many times do you have to murder before you're called a murderer? If you murder today and you hide out from the law 50 years and 50 years from now they find you, you're a murderer. You never changed. You always, from that time you murdered, you're a murderer. And without the forgiveness through Jesus Christ, without accepting Jesus, and the gift that was given, him dying and taking the punishment for our sins, until you do that, until you repent and are baptized in his name for the forgiveness of sins, the remission of sins, and receive the Holy Spirit, you stand guilty before a righteous God who will do the right judgment with you and me. He will. And so... He says, I didn't come to call the righteous. Those that think that they're okay, he didn't come to call those. He came to call those who are sinners and know that they're sinners and know they need to repent. When that happens in your heart, listen, Jesus is calling. And when he calls, like I said earlier, and I'll say again, when Jesus calls, please answer. The examples in scripture show that immediately there was an answer from the person who Jesus called, immediately turning to Jesus and turning away from sin. 
1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9 says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen, if you turn from your sins and place your trust in Jesus, if you repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the Holy Spirit, God is faithful to keep his promise. He loves us so much, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can place your full weight upon that promise and stand on it. It is true and it is eternal, but it is a limited time offer. Eternal in that if you accept the offer, if you accept this free gift of God, of salvation in Jesus, you have an eternity with him. But it's a limited time offer in that if you die first, if you hit a tree and die, if you touch an electric cord and die, if you drown in a swimming pool, if you have some kind of an accident and fall from a ladder, if you slip on the floor and hit your head and have a stroke, listen, life is too fragile to play games with Jesus Christ. Would you agree with that? It's time, it's high time, it's past time to answer the call of Jesus Christ. It's time to answer his call. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24 says, He who calls you is faithful. Again, Christ isn't calling you to some fake salvation. Christ isn't calling you to some fly-by-night uh, business uh, or a product that doesn't deliver what it says it delivers. You can count on Jesus Christ because he who calls you is faithful. You know, we're, we're told that we're to have faith in Jesus Christ, but Jesus is faithful in following through with everything that he promises us. I love Jesus. I love him. And he is faithful and always delivers. And then here's where I want to end up tonight. I want to end up in Revelation chapter 3. Would you turn there with me? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. I'll get a drink of water here. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Jesus is speaking to the church in Laodicea. And Jesus tells them, hey, you know what? Uh, you are lukewarm. And as we get this message to the church in Laodicea from Jesus, and these are his words to that church, we need to know that it is his words to today's church as well. Uh, if you belong to a congregation that is lukewarm, in other words, um, you can take Jesus or you can leave him. Uh, you can serve him or I'm, I might not serve him. Uh, you can follow him on this day, or maybe today I'm not going to follow him. It's that kind of uh, apathy. It's that kind of not caring. It's that kind of, um, of just lukewarmness that Jesus does not like. In fact, Jesus says, I wish that you were either hot or cold. He can deal with us when we're cold. He calls us, and he calls us to that burning bright light in him that life and light and love that's in him. But he says, I wish that you were either hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I just want to vomit you out of my mouth. And that's what the scripture says. Those are the words of Jesus. I just want to spew you out of my mouth. And then Jesus says this. It says in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Jesus says, look, I stand at the door and knock. And this is some of the saddest words in the whole Bible. Do you realize that? Jesus is speaking to this church and any church that is like this who has grown lukewarm and, and Jesus says, hey church, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. 
here's the picture. Jesus has been cast out of the church. They don't want to hear the words of Jesus. They don't want to hear the duty that we're called to in Jesus. They don't want to know that they are sinners. They don't want to know that they're unrighteous and they need a savior. And so Jesus has been put out of the church. And Jesus now, the one who died for everyone, died and rose from the grave so that we could have hope in him, knowing that he died and took our sins to the grave. And if we will just trust in him and come to him and believe on him, repent, and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and receive the Holy Spirit, we have an eternity with him as part of his family. And, and Jesus in this church and in some churches today, Jesus is outside on the stoop and he's knocking on the door asking to be let back in. It's such a sad picture, isn't it? Such a sad picture. There may be churches who have individuals in that congregation who will hear the voice of Jesus and stir the congregation to open the doors and let Jesus back in. Let the word of God back in. Let Jesus rule as the head of the church, which he is. And we are the body. We obey the head of the church. And we are the body. He is our master, our Lord and our Savior. Other churches will ignore, and eventually Jesus will walk off of that stoop, and this church will not be a church. It'll be a social club or a meeting place of some sort, but it won't be a church. It won't be a gathering of believers following Jesus as disciples. Let's apply that to our own lives, okay? Because right now, there are those who have grown lukewarm, in the faith. There are those who know, if, if you check your heart right now, uh, you may be one of these who know that things between you and Jesus are not like they used to be. Uh, we've drifted. We've drifted away. We have grown cold, or, or what's worse, we've grown lukewarm with an attitude that says, eh, I can take it or leave it. I'm not so bad. That is all bad thinking. And it's not of God. It is of Satan. Those are the, the thoughts that Satan would want you to think. Because it's the apathetic. It's those who don't care that Jesus will spew out of his mouth. And, and I'm going to tell you, do you think he's going to spew out of his mouth those who go to heaven? I don't think so. And so it's important, friend, it's important. If you have drifted, Jesus is calling. He's calling right now. He's calling through his word. He's calling through his servant. He's calling through his spirit. And he's asking you to open your heart up to him and let him come in. And those of you that don't belong to Jesus, don't feel like you're something uh, hideous to look at uh, and that we're afraid of you and we don't love you. We do love you. And the reason we love you is this. We were all in your shoes at one time. We weren't born saved. We weren't born believing. We weren't born into the family of God. We were born into the sinful lives of men and women. And, uh, and, we had that time in our lives where we didn't belong to Jesus, where we were sinners, horrible criminals in the eyes of the Lord. And so we are no better than you. We're just saved. We have turned from sin. We have been baptized in the waters of baptism, immersed, buried with Christ in baptism, and have been risen out of those waters to walk in the newness of life in Jesus Christ. And then we've received the Holy Spirit. Jesus sends his spirit to dwell in us and to lead us. Jesus says in, in John chapter 10 that he is the good shepherd. Well, he's shepherding us by his spirit and his word. Would you join him today? Would you answer the call today? 
I'm going to ask you as we bow to pray here that you would answer that call. That, that once this uh, service is over, um, I'm, I'm hoping that you're in a place where you can find a private moment and a private place to just come alone to Jesus Christ and turn your life over to him. Turn away from sin. Ask for forgiveness. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that he is faithful if we come and confess our sins to him. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is a great and loving Savior. People talk about God being a mean, uh, terrible uh, war criminal almost. This God loves us. Those who don't come to Jesus Christ to be rescued, they're going to die an eternal death. But our loving God has offered life in Jesus. Jesus is calling. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we bow before you humbly. And Father, we confess our sins to you. We are sinners. We are lawbreakers. And we ask for your pardon. We ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us our sins. Cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And fill us with your spirit. Help us to put on your righteousness. Help us to, to live our lives in a way that honors you and speaks of your great love. Help us to share this good news with others. And Lord, save us and help us to walk a path of holiness to you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.